So we were talking about the, uh, I'm still working on the shadows here. I have to keep moving my lamps around. I'm going to have to get another lamp here in a minute, but anyway, suffer through it for now. Um, okay, so we were talking about plate tectonics, and we were talking about, and you're probably wondering what this has to do with hydrogeology. I, I promise there is a connection. <clears throat> um, okay, so we were talking about what happens when um, tectonic plates collide, and that's that's basically what can happen, right? Tectonic plates will either subduct or not, depending on what sort of um, type of crust is colliding. If it's continental and oceanic, you'll get subduction. If it's oceanic and oceanic, you'll get subduction. But if it's two chunks of continental crust, they won't subduct and they'll smash into each other and form mountains. Um, so another part of plate tectonics then is when these two tectonic plates simply slide past each other. And again, the kind of the way I did it was like this. This again is going into the page and this is coming out of the page so that they're sliding past each other like this. Um, if you're looking down from space, you'd see something like this. So here's, here's Los Angeles, and this is north, and this is the Pacific Ocean somewhere out here, right? So this tectonic plate, which is everything on this side of this line, is moving to the north, and everything on this side, which is a different tectonic plate, is moving this way. So this is the North American plate over here, and this is the Pacific plate over here, and they're sliding past each other along a giant fault system, which is you know, sort of colloquially referred to as the San Andreas Fault, um, although it's, it's actually thousands and thousands of faults. Uh, okay, so that one's pretty straightforward, and you know these things um, will stay more or less static for long periods of time, and then as the pressure uh, builds and builds, eventually they'll they'll shift. And and basically the way that works, right, is you can imagine that my hands are the two tectonic plates. The um, the tectonic plates are sort of moving like this. They're they're locked where they intersect at the fault, but they're moving pretty gradually out here, far removed from the fault, and eventually the the, the fault isn't strong enough to hold that kind of offset, that kind of strain, that stress, and so the fault slips, and that's an earthquake, and catches up with itself like this, and you're left with uh, the offset, and then it'll be locked again, and it'll start shifting, and then it will offset into that. So those are earthquakes. Um, for our purposes, they're not, they're not as important. The big, the really important part of all this is uh, what happens when tectonic plates diverge from each other. Um, we had convergence above, and here we've got divergence. So tectonic plates are diverging. <clears throat> and um, this is basically how, um, well, it's how oceans are born. Um, what you start out with, and we're going to look down now, looking down from space again. Here's north. This is a, a different view. This was a vertical slice through the Earth. This is now looking down from space. We have some big piece of continent, let's say. And a crack begins to form. And this side of the tectonic plate begins to move this way. And this side of the tectonic plate begins to move this way. And they begin to pull apart. right? And so that's sort of what I was referencing earlier when you have something that looks kind of like this with this ocean in between. So what's happening? Well, what's happening is that when tectonic plates pull apart, you have crust. Here we are in a vertical slice again. And up near the top, up near the land surface, the uh, the rocks are pretty cold. As you know, rocks aren't, aren't very hot. They're kind of cold. And when they're cold, they're brittle. And they want to break. Uh, as you go further and further down in the crust, and this is many, many miles as you go further and further down, the temperature increases. So they're hotter down here colder at the top and warmer further down. And as they get warmer, just like uh, glass is a great example. If you've ever seen somebody blowing glass, they heat it up until it's glowing and then they can twist it and turn it. But as soon as it cools, it's, it's brittle. So this is sort of it's a dramatic example, overly dramatic example of this. But as rocks get warmer, they get more ductile. They get more plasticky. And so as you begin to pull on these uh, this chunk of rock, what you get are cracks forming up here in response to the pulling. But as you go further and further down, the rocks are able to kind of ooze out of the way a little bit more. In any case, you get these 
these big cracks up here, which are referred to as faults. Faults are cracks in the rock where the rock is breaking and moving along, along past itself. And so what will happen over time is the faults will begin to penetrate deeper and deeper. That's a terrible diagram, but the idea is that the, the faults here are allowing the crust to begin to pull apart in the center. And as that extension continues, you get this very thin, stretched out crust and these two chunks of continent becoming further and further apart from each other. Now, one of the things that happens here, again, these are all things I'm gonna keep cycling back to, but one of the things that happens is as you thin the crust, you begin, for again, for reasons we'll talk about in a minute, to cause volcanoes to form. And that's supposed to be a volcano, volcanic eruption. You have lots of, of molten rock, lots of melt being produced underneath this and coming up. And the lava that's produced there, uh, the molten rock that's produced as the crust moves apart from each other, forms oceanic crust when it cools. It's that thin, dense rock which is what makes up oceanic crust. So the further and further apart these tectonic plates move, the more oceanic crust you're filling in behind. And eventually, of course, as the basins get really big, um, then water will eventually find its way in and you'll get a little ocean. Okay, so that's, that's that. So um, the, uh, the life cycle of these oceans, because oceans can be born, they can grow old, and they can, they can be squeezed shut and die, is a, a kind of a neat and tidy way to describe plate tectonics. And so that's what we're going to cover right here. And that's referred to as the Wilson cycle, after J. Tuzo Wilson, one of the big thinkers in plate tectonics. Uh, in the early days, in the 60s and 70s. It's in his honor. He's the one that sort of worked this out. And again, the Wilson cycle is the life cycle of an ocean basin. And one of the neat things about the Wilson cycle is that it's, um, it's happening, some example of it is happening everywhere on Earth, so we can actually see oceans being born, growing old, dying, and so forth. So there are six stages to the Wilson cycle. Stage one is birth. I'm supposed to say birth. The birth of an ocean basin occurs in what's called a rift, a continental rift. So the rift means to tear apart, right? So this is what I was talking about a second ago. Continents um, begin to tear apart, and as they tear apart, they form these long cracks. And an example uh, is the East African Rift, which I'll show you diagrams of or images of in a minute. The East African Rift. And <clears throat> the Horn of Africa, basically, that's supposed to be Africa. This part of the East African Rift kind of runs down here like this. Actually, not at all like that, but you'll see. But this part is essentially rifting off from the rest of Africa. And so eventually, this will be its own continent, its own smaller continent, leaving the rest of Africa behind. And there will be ocean between the two. Uh, according to my crummy diagram, maybe it would look something like this in several million years with, with water separating the two. OK, that's not where we are yet. We're just at this rift valley that's forming in there. And there are lots of volcanoes and, and uh, down drop valleys and so forth. OK, stage two would be, let's say, youth. And the youth stage of an ocean would be something like the Red Sea, uh, which is right up in here, just north of the East African Rift. Um, or the Gulf of Aden is another one that's, that's right in there. And uh, essentially what you have, right, is you have this, um, this continent I'm going, switching back and forth between vertical and, and horizontal views now, but this is the, um, the, 
this is the bulk of Africa, let's say, and this is the horn of Africa. And in several million years, these are going to be pulled apart just a little bit, and you're going to have this long, linear, narrow sea. Long, linear, let's say shallow sea, which is what, if you look up the Red Sea online, again, I'll show you in a minute, that's sort of the early stages of an ocean. Uh, and it's just a progression from the first stage. If this linear, shallow sea begins to get bigger and bigger and bigger, now you can get something that looks like the Atlantic. Right, you've got uh, you got North America over here, and you've got you know Greenland and Iceland and British Isles and all that stuff. Europe over here, Africa. Uh, that's supposed to be the Mediterranean. That's terrible, but in any case, there is um, a center of rifting occurring still today, running right down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. This is supposed to be North America and Europe and Africa over here, right? And this is all the Atlantic Ocean, obviously. But new crust is constantly being created every time you pull those, move those tectonic plates, North America and Europe, South America and Africa, further apart from each other, you are creating space, and that space is filled with lava or melt rising up along this ridge axis. And when it solidifies, it creates new oceanic crust. Um, and as you can see, in each one of these cases, stage one, stage two, and stage three, every day the oceans or the rift valleys get a little bit bigger. That changes when we move to stage four, which is uh, an example of which is the Pacific Ocean. So the Pacific Ocean has places in it where, oce where oceanic crust is being created, but by and large, the Pacific Ocean is getting smaller. And it's getting smaller because North America over here and South America over here, this is North America and South America, and Australia over here, and Asia over here, are all basically running it over. So North America is moving this way, South America is moving this way, and uh, Australia is moving this way. And as North and South America and Australia converge towards Asia, what are they doing to all of that Pacific crust Pacific Ocean crust in between. They are running over it. And when they run over it, what they're doing is they're subducting it. So this is South America, and this is the Pacific Ocean out here, and there's subduction going on between the oceanic crust below the Pacific Ocean and South America, and this happens in North America and Central America as well. There are these big subduction zones running all along the west coast of the Americas, as the Pacific plate gets destroyed underneath it. Um, okay, stage five is analogous to stage two. It's a long, linear, shallow sea. But in this case, and this is an example would be the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean Sea. The Mediterranean Sea is a long, linear, shallow sea, just like the Red Sea. But the difference is that unlike the uh, the Red Sea, where every day gets a little bit wider, the Mediterranean Sea is actually being squeezed shut. So here is the Mediterranean Sea. This is north. This is Africa. This is Europe up here. This is the Atlantic Ocean out here. And it turns out that uh, Africa and Europe are actually colliding towards each other, and as they do, the, the oceanic crust that underlies the Mediterranean is being subducted and destroyed underneath of Europe. And if we sort of fast forward millions and millions of years, we can see stage six, which I'm running out of time, so I'll come back and talk about stage six in just a sec.